nothing like a good comic to celebrate the holiday season. So IDW decided to be generous this year and give us a 50 page holiday special featuring the EQG cast. Was it a worthwhile Christmas present or was it something that you gotta go back and return? Let's find out. Christmas time is near Cantalot High, but Sunset Shimmer doesn't have anyone to celebrate it with since, you know. After telling Applejack that she usually spends the holidays alone, she decides to call up a secret meeting and holy god look at those thumbs. Man, those things have definition. Oh wait, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Applejack suggests that she and the others plan slumber parties for Sunset Shimmer to attend, all leading up to a big party at Sweet Apple Acres. All seems to go well, until after the first slumber party at Pinkie Pie's house, the girls find that someone has posted their embarrassing moments at the party online, and the resulting mistrust between them causes friction in their friendship. Now, as familiar as this premise sounds, I think it's done well here. The writing for this issue was handled by Ted Anderson, who has written some really good issues in the past. He takes advantage of the journal element that was used in Rainbow Rocks and uses it for some nice scenes between Twilight and Sunset Shimmer. It was definitely refreshing to see Twilight giving support from the sidelines for a change, helping Sunset deal with her situations via correspondence through the journal. Why this method wasn't used for Rainbow Rocks is beyond me. I also really like the problem that this comic dealt with. I've gone on record before saying that I really enjoy when MLP tackles some really tough issues, Flight to the Finish and issue number 10 of Friends Forever for example. This story takes advantage of the technology in the EQG universe and uses it as a way to present the issue of cyberbullying, which is definitely a relevant issue that kids and even adults are dealing with these days. The lesson really hits its mark when they mention the permanence of cyberbullying and how what you post online can never go away. As for the ending, it's one of those things where you should have seen it coming but didn't and once you find out what it is you feel stupid. Let's just say it borrows a page from a certain episode of a certain season of a certain TV show. However, because we're in a different universe with different elements and different technology, the story is able to stand out on its own without seeming like a carbon copy. Now as for the art for this comic, it was done by Tony Fleeks who also did the Equestria Girls Annual last year, so he's no stranger to the style. Judging from the cover alone, you can already tell that he's really improved over the last year. Not just in character designs, but also in scene transitions. The establishing shots for the beginning of each scene helped to give the story a natural flow, and the panel designs and art choices really helped enhance the narrative. There are even nice little nods and references to find, as there are in every issue. We get appearances from Maude and Trixie, a reference to the Windigos from the Heartwarming Eve episode, and we even get a MySpace reference, as dated as that is. All in all, the visuals for this comic have evolved from last year, similar to how the visuals for Rainbow Rocks evolved from the first Equestria Girls film. The story was engaging, the art was pretty to look at, and by the end of it, I really got into the holiday spirit, as if my outfit wasn't already an indication of that. If you at least found mild enjoyment in the first two Equestria Girls films, or in last year's EQG Annual, I'd say give this comic a shot. For those that enjoyed Sunset Shimmer's characterization in Rainbow Rocks, I highly recommend this to you. This is a must read. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go pack, cause I'm going home for the holidays. Seriously, that's not a joke. I really should be packing right now. Instead, I'm spending my time talking about comics. Man, do I have my priorities in order. So, what do you think of IDW's little Christmas present to us? Let me know in the comments below, or send me a message on Tumblr. Until next time, keep it sketchy, folks. And whatever you celebrate this year, I hope you have a happy holiday.